Hello and welcome to Simply Solo Playthroughs. We are here with another Top 5 Games. This list is Top 5 Solo Only Games. So if there's a two-player expansion or solo player rules, it's out. Imperial Assault, out. Gloomhaven, out. These are just five games that are the best solo player games, and they're just solo only. Now, a caveat with this list. This is going to be a top ten list total, but I'm doing the top five in two parts. These are number six through ten. And like any list, this is opinion. All top lists are opinion. You know, what is the best? It's generally an opinion. So, here we go. Let's take a look at number 10. Number 10 is Rack Patrol. If you've paid attention to the channel, you know that this is a game I really like. The only reason this is number 10, 10 and not much higher is because at this point it's only a print and play game. And it is a pretty straightforward print and play game. Your goal is to get back to the base safely, to sink as many ships as you possibly can. During your tour, you turn over cards. When they come up, you flip over to find the angle on the bow, and then you go on ahead and you attack and do different things. The cards, all the information you need is on the card. The cards are well designed. There are no dice involved. There is no, the luck is all in the draw of the cards. And there's a whole lot of cards. But it's a lot of fun. It's a great game to play. You can play it over and over and over. I've, at one point, I had probably 20, 30 games in a row, which is three tours each. And that was a lot of games before I finally got sunk. And it was, it was going, I was almost made it through the war. Um, but I didn't. <laughs> um, I think you would enjoy this game if you enjoy just kind of the randomness of cards, taking actions. The advantage is, is you do know what has come up, so you know kind of what's out there. And you can you know, make guesses as to when this card comes up, do I want to go into base or not? And resupply my ship. You know how many of these are left. You know how many ships. You have an idea of how many ships are left. How many you've gone through. And most importantly, is the carrier still out there? Good luck on sinking the carrier. Uh, I hope that you would enjoy this game. And when it comes out on Kickstarter as the USS Harder, I hope that you would back it also. So, let's take a look at number 9. Number nine is Unbroken. There's a lot of anger out there about this game, and I do not blame those who who didn't get their game. And unfortunately, I just bought the print and play, and I'm going to be honest, I probably would not have bought it if I knew all the stuff that was going on. Um, there are used copies on eBay that you can find. It is... A great game it is really good unfortunately Golden Bell really messed up and I feel bad for the designer and this this game is never going is most likely never going to have an expansion even though it would be great if it did so the premise here you are an intrepid adventure going down into the dungeon and you find that your party is dead you have to survive unbroken to come back up out of the dungeon. And of course, with a dungeon motif, the idea is that you're down at the bottom and you're coming up and it's getting harder as you go up. We'll ignore that. But you have to pass different monsters at different levels. These are bosses of each level. And of course, they get harder as you go up 
each level. At the end of each level, you also have to make sure that you have enough food. If not, you can starve. I think I have only made it out once without starving. And I have starved at the last boss. After after doing the lo last boss and you starve, it's like, really? This is... This is... This is... Uh, it's really frustrating. And these are the bosses. Oh, there's more. Huh? Oh, these are ones that I've played recently. Okay. So, you have different bosses that you're going to ultimately f face. They have armor. They have lots of health. You have to break armor before you can go after the health. And they're set up really well. This is a well, well-designed game. Our achievements. But, and really good notes on how to play. This is a really good game. Unfortunately, it had its problems that were involved with Kickstarter. You have different characters that you can play. And there are male and female versions on both sides. You have score pads. There's, it comes with everything. It's really nice. And of course, as you go, you build up weapons to try and get better as you go. Unfortunately, you start off with bare hands. And you cannot do a lot of damage. The good news is you have low level creatures as you go. You have different encounter cards. This is, these are great. So you have the encounter cards and they will tell you how much time you're going to spend what you have to spend and what you gain. And sometimes you, you draw two of these, sometimes you can use them, sometimes you can't. Sometimes, unfortunately, you just have to take a rest. Here you're gonna forage for food. And they have flavor text in them, which is really kind of nice. Um, I like the flavor text. But these, are, like I said, this is a well-designed game. Um, it's really sad that it had all the problems that it had, but it is a very enjoyable game to play. It has a good the story that goes with it. It's a dungeon crawler kind of a game. Unbroken, really good game. Unfortunately, it had Golden Bell. Let's go on ahead and look at number eight. Number eight is Harsh Shadows. Uh, this is Rachel Bruner's brilliant game where you play a spy um, and an agent. And you're trying to go through as the agent and collect certain things. You'll have to go through discovery. You'll have to find things. And for those of you who've watched the channel know that I really enjoy this game. I have actually uh, this and a print and play version of it. Uh, I used the print and play version frequently during lunch. And you go around this city. That was convenient. So you'll go around the city looking for different things. You can drop a bug off at certain places. This cannot have a bug. And uh, you'll have to collect evidence, false leads, and red herring. The most important thing is not only do you have to have the correct, know what the correct three items are, you also have to have the red herring. And you have to have the discarded, you have to have discarded the red herring. You occasionally do run into bombs. You do have a diffusing kit. The interesting thing about this is, is movement. And the movement is done by cards. So you just pick up a card and the spy moves wherever it needs to do. Again, this is a solo only game. Uh, 
put up by Rachel Bruner. And I cannot say enough about Her Shadows. It is one of the games that I find myself going to time and time and time again. Uh, because I enjoy it that much. If this is a game that you get, you will enjoy it. It's a lot of fun and it's different every time. Car Shadows by Rachel Bruner. The bad news, these guys are no longer in business, so finding the game is sometimes hard. And she does say 30 minutes, but sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it doesn't. So let's go take a look at number seven. Number seven is Maquis. This is, I love this game. I keep playing it over and over and over. I do also have it on my phone and I'll sometimes just play it on the phone for a while. So you are a French resistance fighter and you have to go through and you have to uh, collect certain things. You have different missions that you will go on and you'll have to collect items and do things. And the thing you have to do is you always have to get back to a safe house. The advantage you do have one, two, three spare rooms that you can use and you can build another safe house like right there. Great place to put one. But you can get food. You can recruit more people. You do have to uh, make sure that your morale stays high, not low. The lower it gets, the worse it gets. And you want to keep soldiers out. But if you need to, you can also kill the Malice, which if they get in your way, you sometimes have to do, unfortunately. Uh, movement is dictated by the patrol cards. And you'll go out, set out, a spot that you want to go to like radio a you can get money and um, a gun you can get supplies there's a lot of things that you can get from here which is really nice or you can get information uh, the patrol will then move to the grocer you then decide hey I'm going to move to uh, let's say the doctors and they'll move to radio B and then you'll move to Oh, let's just say, uh, mm, uh, the fence. Why you do there is beyond me. Oh, grocer, no, they go to Pont du Nord. And the interesting thing is this pretend thing, we didn't have Point Levesque come up, which this is the most important spot on the board. Your first spot will almost always go to here because if you don't have this spot or this spot, you're in a world of trouble. And if you have this one, you need these two. So you can go ahead and do it in a lot of different ways, but the patrol cards are the ones that decide where your enemy goes. It is also very much only a solo player game. There are and there is an expansion uh, which has some harder missions. They are bigger cards. And this was a separate one. You can usually buy these together. And of course, you've got the tokens, you've got all the fun stuff. And you'll sometimes have to put into the spare rooms, you'll have to put some kind of a house in, uh, whether it's a chemist, a forger, or someone that can get you this kind of information so this is a, also a really great game I play it on a fairly regular basis so let's go take a look at number six number six should not be a surprise to anybody that this is on the list the surprise is that it's not higher and you'll find out why in the next video but that also shouldn't be a surprise Hostage Negotiator. This is, this used to be my favorite game. Um, there's a reason why it's number six and not number two, which is where it probably really should belong. 
I absolutely love this game. This is a tough, tough game. There's all kinds of stuff that goes with this. And I do now have a complete game. We're going to be opening this soon. All your cards fit in the box. They do fit sleeved. I have to say, Van Ryder Games did a fantastic job on this game. You, I have tons of meeples because I have everything for it. You have the dice. And let me just say, the dice hate you. They are infused with evil. Uh, you go around, you are a hostage negotiator. Your goal is to save hostages from the hostage pool. You have an abductor who is going to go on ahead and try and kill you. Well, not you, but to kill hostages. Or need some other kind of a major demand. And most of them have minor demands and escape demands, which are all kind of separate. Uh, the, the thing with this game is you really need to make sure that you get the demands pulled out right away. The second most important thing is getting this threat level down. This is the same as the horror level on Final Girl. And you need to get this down as fast as you can, as low as you can. The difference between this and Final Girl is you start with zero conversation points. So it takes a lot of work to buy cards. I think the most I've ever had has been eight points at any one game. I really do enjoy this game. You have a terror deck, you have nine cards plus one, and it is the 10th is a uh, gold pivotal event card. And something really bad happens, and if you do not rescue the hostages by then and take out the killer, you're you lose the game. This has a game that you can lose lots of different ways and you can only win one and that is by rescuing people. The game is also if you buy the crime wave which is this large box like I said it does fit everything. These are the extra meeples of all the killers. I absolutely love this. Dan Rider Games, this was brilliant. I love this. I wish I had this for Final Girl. Versus the minis. Uh, there is the Crime Wave expansion. This is a career campaign path of the game. There is a This thing is stocked. And I do have the alternate finale. Notice I have not played it yet. This is on my list of things to do is to go all the way through the career of Hostage Negotiator. And this is, like I said, this is a great game. I find it very intense. When I play, I expect bad things to happen, and I don't like that. I do not like losing this game at all, and I lose way too much. Uh, but this is a game that will test your skills. The rules, are, like I said, are pretty simple. They're straightforward. And everything comes in one nice box. Fantasy Flight, are you paying attention? Please pay attention, Fantasy Flight. I had to say that, sorry. But uh, Hassan Negotiator. The number one of the bottom five. Or number six, depending on how you look at it. I ended up losing this box earlier, and this has become my travel version of Hostage Negotiator. And so this goes with me, so I have like doubles of everything. It's really kind of nice. Has a small mat, small space, definitely a low space game at the base level. And then you can buy 10 of the expansion decks. I hope that you have enjoyed this. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. Come back later and have a fantastic day.